everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are putting on our Christmas caps again. It's only been a couple of weeks, but we need to talk Christmas. <laughs> we need to get back. Uh, and we're talking classic Christmas movies mm-hmm. from Hallmark. Going to be really fun. We've done, this is our fourth? I one? think so. I think yeah, so. Yeah, fourth one. Uh, I'm from Critic Rachel Wagner and Thaddeus is here. All right. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> did you have a good holiday season? Yes, I did. I, I really enjoyed it. Got to see my family. The actually all so I have three siblings. All three of all four of us were home, oh, <laughs> like nice. staying at the house. So it was a full house with them plus That's my cool. nephews and all that. It was it was a lot, but it was fun. Um, good. Oh so yeah. What about you? Yeah, I uh, I had a nice Christmas. Uh, I kind of recovering from covering all the movies. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so it was goodness. just relaxing and having fun. Uh, my uh, my family we kind of did our Christmas celebration on Christmas Eve mm-hmm. um, because it's kind of a crazy story. My my parents' friend uh, what is a semi truck driver, and mm-hmm. it, that was like bitter cold that happened in like Colorado. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. uh, he was out chained, putting on the, on the chains and he got frostbite and he had to oh. be in the hospital. So my oh, parents had bad? to go up. Yeah. My parents had to go up on Christmas day and help their friend. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That's quite the story. But luckily he's, I think he's doing much better. So that's mm-hmm. good. And, um, and luckily we had done pretty much our, all of our celebrating on Christmas Eve. So it worked out, uh, fine. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, I never heard of anybody having that kind of you know thing in just a couple of. I guess it takes a long time to get those chains on sometimes. Okay, but yeah, you know. remember there was like this period where it was just really cold. Like even you know here at the East Coast in Maryland, it was yeah. like single digits with sub zero wind chills. I was like, yeah, so cold. It was really cold for a while. Yeah. So yeah, it's been fun and, uh, and, uh, just relaxing and take things. Mm-hmm. It's kind of nice doing our end of the year, uh, episodes. Those are mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Cause you don't have to yeah. watch anything new. Yeah. So, <laughs> just, so those are nice, but, uh, but this was fun also to look back on mm-hmm. some classic films and uh, some ones that I haven't seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we kind of, I think we said that 2012 was our cutoff. Yeah, right? I, believe so. I believe so. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so we are talking today or maybe 2013, we changed it so we could do, yeah. it was one of, one of those two, as long as yeah. we were before official countdown to Christmas, I think we can consider it a classic. I'm yeah. Personal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, but today we're going, all of these are pretty far back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we're talking about a uh, season for miracles, mm-hmm. which was one of the biggest like Hall of Fame Christmas yes. movies that they ever did. Uh, and then we we're talking Silver Bells, mm-hmm. which was also a Hall of Fame, I believe. Right, right, yes, yes. And then we have uh, Farewell, Mr. Kringle, and that was 2010. Right. So that's when. Let's see, in 2010, they did. How many? Um, uh, um, it doesn't say. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen Christmas movies, 2010. Oh, wow. Still in yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's when they really uh, started because mm-hmm. 2009, you only had four. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So things really started to so pick up. Started- once they got out of the arts, they started to um, pick it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we should say since you're here, what did you think overall of the this this last season? Did you think it was a? Oh, so overall, okay. yeah, I, I enjoyed them but for for the most part. I mean, there were a couple that I you know didn't that didn't that I didn't really care for. There were a couple that were kind of like stand out, like you know, all time. Mm-hmm. kind of level yeah um what is it? like um you know three wise men and a christmas baby and the um why is, why is the name not coming the um the scrooge one the uh, you know oh it goes to christmas always yeah goes yeah to christmas. that oh, was really good two favorites of of the year yeah i love them um 
and you know, you know, I, I know the other ones, you know, were you know all right, and then there were a couple that you know I didn't particularly care for. So yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always going to be a mixed bag from any studio. I do think <laughs> all of the networks all started off strong and then kind mm-hmm. of petered out yeah. for the most part. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I was actually lifetime. Well, how, lifetime how started off so strong. <laughs> How many total movies did you, new I, new Christmas movies did you see? 130. 130. 130? Yeah, 130. Okay. So I did break my record, was a, which was 125. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, every year is going to be more because more and more that, places are going to be coming out with these movies. I and I think there were over 200. So I didn't yeah. even uh, come close to to watching all of them. So it's it's you, wild. You still have but some left, you got to catch up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ho ho ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. All right, well, let's dive in. So this first movie we're talking about is called A Season for Miracles. And this... uh, and and so this movie uh it stars carla gigino kathy baker david conrad laura dern patty duke lynn redgrave may whitman it's got an amazing cast director <laughs> michael pressman and uh, it's based on a novel called season for miracles by marilyn papano and the screenplay was written by maria N- N- nation and uh the summary is when a young woman's niece and nephew are threatened with foster care after her sister is hospitalized following yet another overdose. She flees with them until they land in the sleepy town of Bethlehem just before Christmas. And a series of kindness and coincidences gives the trio a chance at happiness. Mm -hmm. So overall, what did you think of this one? How to hold it for you? I love this movie. Um, it's, one of, <laughs> it's uh, probably one of my all-time favorites it was mm-hmm. uh, it was a movie that you know I pretty much watch every year um since it came out um I think that it just you know the overall feel of the movie I think you know it, like it is a little cheesy but you know I just think that it's so heartfelt and um you know, and I and I actually like some of the realism particularly at the beginning of the movie i mean it is a little silly how she's able to kind of you know do you know get away with this whole you know thing that she ends up doing but i really enjoy it yeah but the thing is is that you're you're able to forgive kind of this the leaps in logic a Mm -hmm. little bit because there's magic because there's an angel involved exactly, and 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 particularly the angel tells her to go to the house and all of that so it it kind of helps you sort of fudge over any anything that might not be the most realistic but it's i mean compared to what they make now it's pretty pretty uh intense yes pretty realistic yes um you know, like, you know, we start off with um, Carla Gugino's character, um, her sister, who apparently has, you know, been, um, you know, has, you know, pretty significant substance use disorder, has kind of been in and out of either prison or rehab. And she and they, she, I guess they're both from Rhode Island, but she had moved to Atlanta and basically uh, uh, frequently has to like just leave her life in Atlanta and go back to Rhode Island to like pick up the pieces 
She's sending her sister money. Her sister's not using it for bills. She's using it for to support her drug habit. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, really sad. And then the interesting thing is, and, and I, and I, that I actually, you know, found it's particularly realistic was in one breath, this is just saying like, I'm going to get myself together this time. But then she asks her daughter, Alana, let, let, to, to let her drug dealer know where she is, which, you know, it's just so, you know, how, you know, how that, how that goes in, you know, yeah. in real life, unfortunately, yeah. you know? Yeah. I've lost two of my cousins to drugs. Mm-hmm. It's very sad. I mean, I yeah. wasn't super close to either of them, but, mm-hmm. but it's still really, really sad. And, um, my one cousin, uh, she had two little, two little boys and, mm-hmm. uh, um, to leave them without a mother is just devastating. And, um, it's, it's so hard to Mm -hmm. break those, those addictions. It's really hard. I I mean, like I said, both people, my family that we, we lost them. Mm -hmm. So I, it's, it, it's so hard. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty shocking at the mm-hmm. beginning of the movie, not only just Lardern's whole performance, but the mm-hmm. fact that her daughter brings her s- steals cigarettes for her, brings them mm-hmm. up like that. Mm-hmm. You would, I mean, you would never see that now mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just in the scene, like how kind of jaded and mean mm-hmm. she was, I mean, so very realistic, like she very selfish like mm-hmm. all she's really focused on is like, you know, getting what she needs to and doing whatever she needs to do to like continue her habit. And, you know, you can tell, I mean, that she does love her kids, but that unfortunately, you know, that's taken over her life and that's what she's put mm-hmm. first. And, you know, you can understand where um, Carla Gugino's character is coming from with, um, you know, kind of you know they grew up together in foster care probably separated at times and so she doesn't want the kids to go through that yeah and so she's coming back and forth I mean I think she's she was probably I think she was probably enabling a little bit like she probably should have um you know not just sent money like I want to I want to see what this money where this money is going let me send this check personally to where to where aware yeah but like those it makes sense that she yeah and someone like her sister is pretty manipulative too i think Mm -hmm. yeah you know he plays with her emotions and Mm -hmm. yeah they definitely don't soften that the mom Mm -hmm. at all like she is um and so kathy baker wants to take the kids to foster care Mm -hmm. uh and so then carla gino's character i forget her name but she um uh she uh she goes on the run <laughs> yes the right yeah i mean she basically she tells them to lie she tells them mm-hmm. to like there's a lot but a lot going on here but you yes. understand yes. she's in these desperate situation and may mm-hmm. whitman is so good in this movie mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. oh when she has the when she testifies at the end mm-hmm. yeah. that got me that yeah. was a great performance yeah really good uh and um i don't know what she's doing now it seemed like she was stuck playing teenagers for so long i mean i know she was great in parenthood but i just felt like she i mean like i was like you're almost 30 why are you still playing teenager mm. give her adult roles please yeah. she's so good she's such a good actress i think yeah mm-hmm. yeah. yeah she she had shared a lot of weight in this movie uh um, yeah you know, really had to grow a lot, um, mm-hmm. you know, particularly like, you know, JT, little kid JT is, is, is so small. So she's speaking for both of them, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Them. She has to give a lot of the backstory for like what was going on in their mother's house because the aunt was like not living there. And so, she, so it's just, it was a, it's a pretty heavy role mm-hmm. and she did a, a really great job um, of, you know, I, I'm giving like an actually pretty nuanced performance. Like, and the interesting thing is what I, what I really enjoy was, you know, you can clearly see that she loves her mother very much, but she like admitted, like my mother needs to be in jail. Um, my mother can't really take care of us. I think that it's best if I stay with my aunt and, you know, I feel like a lot of, you know, movies or, you know, would usually have, her, you know, her being like, you know, 
I need to be with my mom. It doesn't matter. But, but the, but to have that, that kind of nuance of like clearly loving the mother and caring about her, Mm -hmm. but also being, being able to recognize that her mother just was not in that position that she could actually be a good mother. And, and, you know, naming that was really interesting. Yeah. To me. And she like tries to not get attached to the mm-hmm. town, to Bethlehem. Right. She yes. really tries, but she almost can't help it. Yeah. And she doesn't want to leave. And you're just like, your heart's breaking for her. Bethlehem is just, it's just magical. <laughs> I mean, you got the, the angel, you know, who, you know, so I, so of course, you know, we love, we love that. Um, you know, the angels, the one that suggests that, um, that they go and stay at that abandoned house, um, of, you know, the lady who had passed away, left it to her niece who had never come for years to to claim the house. And then when the police officer comes to like, you know, check on the seed and, you you know, he's a little suspicious. He needs to make sure magically produces the document naming Carla Trujillo's character as the niece <laughs> that's gonna um and everything else and he's like okay now I can just go he's like now I can just go all in with this whole thing but yeah so yeah. um I, so I really enjoyed her how so she would just kind of I think they did a good job of just having her like suddenly appear but not be like too over the top with the magic mm-hmm. until like the very end I mean of course you knew yeah. that she was an angel but yeah, <laughs> I mean, you wonder who uh, who did uh, everybody else in the diner think that was getting these people their food and everything? <laughs> like, you wonder. Uh, I guess, but apparently, there's <laughs> only a couple of people here and there. You and know. when she leaves, she says, "Keep the change to the to the." <laughs> it's like the angel shouldn't have taken the money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but Patty Duke is a lot of fun in this yes. role as the yes. angel. She mm-hmm. is really good. And they, they, yeah, they go to this empty house and, and, uh, the, uh, the neighbors bring over cinnamon rolls, the cop mm-hmm. comes, he wants to mm-hmm. help. He asks her a <laughs> lot of questions, Yes, but he's like, he's, he falls very quickly Yes, for Carlos yeah. character. Yes. And name. I think, I think that was kind of why he was asking Emily. some questions. Yes. Emily. He, that's why he was following, asking so many questions. Cause he's like, you know. His heart went pit a patter right away. It was like left <laughs> first sight. He was like, "Okay, I need to make sure that she's on the up and up before I before I really let myself go all yeah. the way." And then as soon as he saw that document, he was just like, "Okay, I'm all in. You know, this is it." Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, May Whitman, she says, uh, "You can't believe anything a policeman says, anyway," mm-hmm. which, which was pretty like. For a child to say that in 1999, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe it wouldn't be surprising now because it's a little more controversy with policemen. Mm-hmm. But uh, but uh, that was a pretty shocking thing mm-hmm. for her to say. Yes. Showed how she had just been warped by her mother. Yeah, so just really yeah. jaded, unfortunately. Yeah, jaded, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when the, the cop wants to buy her the cake... And she's mm-hmm. just like, no, like nothing good can happen. And she's like, I wish mm-hmm. there was a park for sad people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, you know, you could just tell that, you know, they, they had really been, been through it. Like, you know, they would stay, they would stay in the car, they were going in and out yeah. of shelters, um, you know, money, like we said, money that her, their aunt was sending to pay bills and things like that. The mother was absconding with and using to, you know, support her habit. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it seems like she was having different, you know, different men coming in and out of the house. They, the movie actually went there and said that the kids had different fathers. I I mean, it was a lot. Yeah. And then Laura Dern, she says to Kathy Baker, she says that, uh, that the kids are already with the best person for them, Mm -hmm. but she doesn't know where they are. And so, yeah, it's pretty intense. And then we, have, we also have Faith Prince at the diner. She's playing Sadie. And I always mm-hmm. love her. She's so good. Yes. Uh, and uh, and then, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, so then, the yeah, the cop, he wants them to go to school. And she's mm-hmm. kind of nervous about it. She's why. Yeah. He says, well, it wouldn't hurt you just to have a couple of days of education. Mm-hmm. 
basically yes. is what, what she says. And the two neighbors, both, I think one of them at least, I think they're both retired teachers. And so, um, you know, and they used to, they went to that school, they worked at that school. And so they're like, yes, uh, we can, you know, help out and get you, get you enrolled in the school. Of course, she doesn't want to do that because then she has to turn in, you know, their papers and, and most likely that would alert the authorities to like where she was, if she were to do that, like Mm -hmm. actually produce like their real identification and things like that. Yeah. I mean, of course now you'd have Amber alerts and so the Mm -hmm. school, just them even just going to school would would notify yeah. that the amber alert so it would be different yeah, now and uh, i love the, the the whole the running gag of this fax machine that wasn't working and so like right. they were getting the, you know they were you know the fax they knew it was coming but it took so long yeah it machine. gets placed <laughs> underneath the like the because it gets coffee on it and yes all of was, that yeah yeah uh, and so then Patty Duke gives them this angel ornament and they mm-hmm. end up, they deck out the, the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, they put in the Christmas tree and uh, then May, that's when May one says, it's not real anyway. We don't belong mm-hmm. here. Ugh. Right. Ugh. Yeah. And the cop, his name is Nathan. Right. Yes. They have a pretty big kiss. Yes. In the mid- in, midway. Um, don't say it's nothing. Say it's none of my business because I know better. Yes. <laughs> And, and of course, this is after he's, he's got, he's been reassured by that doc, the angel produced document. Yes. Um, I really liked them together. Um, I did I thought too. they had um, great chemistry. I thought that um, the actor, you know, did a really good job of like communicating this warmth and yeah. he does, does a good job of like, like, I believe him that he's just falling madly in love with this woman so quickly. It's <laughs> yeah. 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 And he knows that she only has two weeks, mm-hmm. but he's like, if that's all, it's at least we, at least we had that. Yeah. And he says, maybe I can convince you to change your mind by the time. I mean, but when they go to court, he's like, Oh, you know, she has, she'll have a place. They can stay with me. I'm marrying her. I was like, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, yeah. This is after, you know, <laughs> two weeks maybe less and i mean they're just ready but you know i bought it i was i was yeah i mean that's two of these movies end in a pretty fast wedding Mm -hmm. and that's something you would never see now Mm -hmm. never every once in a while every once in a while they'll they'll throw one in but you know well usually they they'll advance it a year or six yeah yeah that's and they... say, show them getting married, but not like right then and there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there, there is a few times like in Christmas on Fifth Avenue, mm-hmm. you know, that ends with a proposal and it's only been, mm-hmm. you know, a few weeks. But uh, but uh, I don't mind it. Like when, no. I'm, you know, sometimes I think when you know, you know, like I I think that if I were to meet somebody and have that spark, I don't think it would necessarily take me a long time to know mm-hmm. I. I mean, who knows what would happen, but just my personality. I, I, I'm, once I kind of make a decision, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the kind of person who likes to sort of like sit in limbo for a long time. I so, think yeah, I, once I'm, I knew I would know, but who yeah, knows? I, I'm, I'll say for me personally, I'm not going to be someone that's going to be in like a several years long relationship. Yeah. I'm like, no, if, you know, you know, a year or so has gone by and, and things are going really well. You see that you're in this and you're kind of head. Yeah. kind of want similar things out of life then i'm ready let's go yeah so <laughs> i definitely don't think i would be engaged long i think once and there's anything wrong with being engaged long but just for my personality i think i would just want it let's do it <laughs> you know i mean it depends on i guess for me it would depend on what the fee- my fiance wanted as far as a wedding you know yeah. I'm, I'm not i'm not someone that's going to want a big extravagant wedding but same if they want a more elaborate type of thing then i'll do a longer engagement but if not it, they you know I'm yeah good. i just <laughs> feel like let's get married in this particular you know movie like i bought into it I, yeah i did know, too the town was magical you know it was meant to be the angel that sent them there it was bethlehem it was christmas <sighs> Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose to believe that they're in Bethlehem, Connecticut, because that's a sm- much smaller town than Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and I think that's closer to Rhode Island, which was where they were. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna choose to believe that's where they were. So yeah, well, they introduce Al- Alana is May Whitman's character's name. She in, they introduced her to the Secret Garden, which I feel like mm-hmm. now you would this would be a Christmas book. 
Mm. Like that was a little bit different. I, I think to now it would probably be like a Christmas Carol or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, but uh, she says anything is possible in the secret garden. And she says, mm-hmm. this is the best book ever. Mm-hmm. And then she runs away. It is just so, she's so good. I we said yeah. it a million times, but she's so good. And she says, don't make us go. I want to stay here where it's nice. And people like me. Yes. You know, Nathan's and, nice. You could marry him and we could be a family. Yes. Oh, huh. yeah. That, it, that was heartbreaking. To, yeah. Because, you know, she really brought like the weight of, you know, what this little girl had been through all of her life um, yeah. in the life that she had to live. And so, you know, because of that, you know, you, it, you just you just feel it. And yeah, she just she does such a good job. Yeah. And then uh, the little boy is BJ or AJ. G- JT. JT. Okay. Yeah. JT um, tells Sadie that Santa, I mean, tells Santa that she's not her, their mom. Right. And, uh, uh, and so everything kind of blows up. And, yeah. uh, and because this guy is coming, that's yeah. like the, um, uh, the attorney, what do you call it? That, the executor the attorney, of the will. The exec- yeah, the executor of the will and the attorney. And he's the only person that has met the the, ne- the real niece as an yeah. adult. And Foster. His name is Foster. Another Foster. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but he was like on vacation. He was cu- coming from Boston. I think that it, it, they'd been snowed in. So she got to spend a little extra time. It seemed like every, you know, she was going to, she was trying to make sure that she left before, um, Mr. Foster Esquire came back. Um, she met, and she, and of course they had like a little fake up because the young Foster came, it was his nephew, um, who was also an attorney and probably, you know, working, you know, an associate. At, yeah, at and he comes stuff. to help her. He's yeah, like, right. You needed, you needed some help. Yeah. It was cute. And uh, um, yeah, and so she ends up in jail and Nathan's like upset, feels yeah, betrayed. And Emily yeah, says, I never course. lied about my feelings for you. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, I got this. And I don't think that they overdid this lie reveal. Especially, yeah, I agree. you know, with, the, I mean, the extent of the lies that she was telling, you know, it made sense that he would, that he would be upset. And especially, you know, because he sold how invested he was in that relationship. That also um, makes it, more believable that he would be that upset and that hurt because typically yeah. you know with these lie reveals and a lot of these movies like they're barely together like they were acting like a real couple at that point Mo- and a lot of these movies like they they haven't even kissed yet yeah they, they they've been planning something haven't even been on an actual date so it's so the like the level of betrayal just doesn't make sense but yeah yeah well and movie, also that they would she, he doesn't think that everything was a lie mm-hmm. you know that's one thing that annoys me about some of these liar reveals that was like how can i believe anything that you told me mm-hmm. it's not i mean they weren't completely pretending because they lied about one small detail or changed mm-hmm. their name or something like that mm-hmm. but uh but yeah this great scene between patty duke and nathan at the mm-hmm. bar and mm-hmm. she says uh, all of us make mistakes but the solution is I is three little words. I forgive you. Mm-hmm. That was a good scene. I thought. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Alana, this is the scene I was talking about earlier when Alana testifies and she talks mm-hmm. about the one time my brother was crying so much. He couldn't breathe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I mean, she should have gotten an Emmy for that. That was a very good little bit of acting. Yeah. I, I think she was just, she was great. The whole, the whole movie. Like, yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that really got me. And this is all we want is to stay together in one place with someone who loves us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Nathan testifies and he says, in her position, I'd like to think I do the same. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. a big moment. And she's the best mother I've ever seen. Yes. All she needs is a support system. And now she's got one. She can live with yeah. me if she'll forgive me. Yes. It's very sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and then he proposes, I want to marry her. Yes. Yeah. And then the ending is so lovely. It's mm-hmm. like classic Hallmark with the little mm-hmm. boy running out into the snow. 
mm-hmm. to the town and like everybody's it's like everybody's surrounding him in love and, and this the is angel just that statue um, yes like yes mm-hmm. so that was a very hallmark ending and yeah. I, I think especially if you think about these hall of fame movies which try to oh. Uh, bring on the tears i think this one does a really good job in the acting it's probably i I don't know if i can think of much better acted homework Mm -hmm. movies than this and one of the best you know child acting oh yeah i mean ever seen i mean the weight that she had to bring with that particular character um and and like elena was basically like this was her story she was the narrator and um you know so and she 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 carried it in a, in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, you know, so what would you give this one? One to five, five, I would give this five crowns. I think, you know, it achieves what it was meant to, meant to achieve. I mean, it, um, you know, it was supposed to be like a kind of feel good, you know, movie, um, where, I mean, obviously there were some difficulties and they actually acknowledged that when they brought the full weight so that when you come out on the other side and everything's great, like you are just like, you know, it gives you, give gave all those feels like you, I was genuinely like invested in these characters. I wanted to see them all be happy at the end. Um, I love the town and the way that they rallied around her and around their family. Um, yeah. I love the romance between um, Nathan and Emily. Um, I was, I was all, you know, all, all the way around five crowns for me. Yeah. If I agree. Five crowns. It's one of the best. Uh, maybe it's not the most rewatchable just because it is so sad, yeah. but for what it's trying to do, I think it does a, a, a really good job. Like I could, this is one that, you know, I pretty much watch once a season. Once, mm-hmm. Like there are some movies that you can watch, you know, a couple of times in a season. Um, this, this and like two turtle doves are like, you know, the kind of once a season movies. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. But, I'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the good folks over at Baker Publishing Group. Looking for the perfect read for Valentine's Day? These historical romance novels will woo their way into your hearts. First up, we have The Maid of Bali Makul by Jennifer Dybell. The only home Brianna Kelly has ever known is Bali Makul boarding school. But when the son of local gentry arrives at the school to deal with his unruly niece, an unexpected discovery uncovers the truth about her past and the key to her future. The Rose and the Thistle by Laura France. Amid the Jacobite uprising of 1715, an English heiress flees to the Scottish lowlands to stay with allies of her powerful family. But while castle walls may protect her from the enemy outside, a whirlwind of intrigue, shifting allegiances, and temptations of the heart lie within. Hearts of Steel by Elizabeth Camden When successful businesswoman Maggie Molinaro offends a corrupt banker, she unwittingly sets off a series of calamities that threaten to destroy her life's work. She teams up with charismatic steel magnate Liam Blackstone, but what begins as a practical alliance soon evolves into a romance between two wounded people determined to beat the odds. Then last up is The Last Chance Cowboy by Jody Headland. When midwife Catherine Remington is accused of a murder she didn't commit, she flees to Colorado to honor a patient's dying wish to deliver a newborn to his father. But what she doesn't bargain for is how easily she'll fall for the charming sheriff or how quickly her past will catch up with her and put their love and their and lives in danger. Listeners of Hallmarkies podcast can get these and many other great books by going to bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash Hallmarkies. And from February 12th to 28th, save 40% using code Valentine's 40. That's bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash Hallmarkies promo code Valentine's 40. Let's talk about the next one. So we are uh, moving up to 2005 and it's Silver Mm -hmm. Bells. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is another Hall of Fame. Yes, it was. It yes. was. And uh, this one uh, stars Anne Heche, rest in peace, uh, yeah. Tate Donovan, uh, and uh, Margot Martindale is also in this. And I love her. She mm-hmm. always elevates anything she's in, whether comedy or drama. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, 
the summary is Manhattanite Catherine O'Mara bonds with a young man who has run away from his father. When Mm -hmm. the father returns to New York a year later to sell his Christmas trees, he and Catherine cross paths. So overall, what'd you think of this one? So that wasn't a great summary, (laughs) Um, but um, I really enjoyed this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, I I don't think that I saw it when it first came out. I think I saw it a few years later, like 2008 or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I've, and I think I've only seen it like once. Uh, And I I enjoyed it. I, first of all, I think if, if this wasn't New York, they did a really good job of making it look like New York. Um, Yeah. I think it was shot on a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if this was shot on the Warner brothers, New York lot Mm -hmm. to me. It looked, but, um, uh, but yeah, they did a very good job of, uh, of that. I just watched a movie, another movie um, that was supposed to take place in New York, and it was the most Canadian looking New York I'd ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> like, yeah. so I was like, oh my goodness, this <laughs> looks like New York. Um, yeah. I, it, interesting, like, you know, and I think part of the reason that I hadn't seen it or rewatched it really was because I was so used to, like, the, you know, the love story being the main story, and it was just, like, not really there. And you know, it was barely part of the story, but, um, and I felt like, you know, it was kind of the father son relationship and this relationship with this, with this, with this young kid. And, um, but yeah, I, I, so I, this was it, shot in LA. So I would mm-hmm. bet money that this was at the, um, Warner brothers lot. Yeah. Okay. New that York makes lot. Sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So but I yeah. agree. I actually think that they, didn't even need to have any romance because it yeah. felt very underdeveloped and there was really yeah. no chemistry between them. I thought, I mean, I, you know, I, I thought it was fine, but um, I mean, I think like they're both good actors and I yeah. liked them in the movie, but just mm-hmm. as far as them as a couple, I didn't really feel it. I, I, they just didn't, they didn't really make sense as a couple to me, yeah. but you know, um, since it was kind of a minor element, I'm not sure how they were going to work that whole thing out. But, um, you know, overall, with the, the story that they were telling, um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it actually, you know, did get like emotional reactions from me. I think they did a good job of kind of setting up um, the son's, um, you know, discontent with the life yeah. how the fa- and the father kind of you know, it's kind of old school. And he was like, this is business is for you. You're going to run this business. You don't need to go to college. You don't need to do anything. Yeah. Go pull out. Let me pull you out of school. And <laughs> well, and I had to like, laugh because of course he's a photographer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was pre-cursor. like, maybe this started out the Hallmark yeah. run of photographers. <laughs> yes. I mean, but you know, that's, that's like their classic artistic, you know, <laughs> um, career is yeah. a photographer. Usually it's a female photographer, but yeah. you know every every now and again you find a male photographer. Yeah, uh, there was just one that I was, I was talking about. Now I can't think of it. That was the male photographer. Oh, what was it? Oh, it'll come to me. Uh, but anyway, the <laughs> he wants to be a photographer. Mm-hmm. He meets Anne Hache and finds out about her gallery. He loves the gallery, mm-hmm. but the dad doesn't want to hear anything of it. Um, yeah. They're staying with Margo Martindale at mm-hmm. her place while they mm-hmm. sell the trees. And yes. this was a pretty big Christmas tree lot for New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, and I mean, he had that whole farm, farm that I uh, guess, you know, it was their harvest time. She, he was pulling them out of school so they could get these trees ready mm-hmm. and then leave for a month, leave for a month, like right, pretty much right after Thanksgiving from Thanksgiving yeah. to Christmas they were going to New York to sell the trees. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, you know, I, I, like, I really felt for this kid. I was like, (laughs) you know, so, so I understood. You did a good job. uh, And, but I was shocked even for 2005, Mm -hmm. they, that, so they get in this like fist fight with each other and the, the dad ends up bloody nose. Yeah. I mean, again, you would never see that now. Never. Never. <laughs> that would never happen. I mean, have a father literally just, like punch his son, like, yeah. and get in a fist fight. Like that yeah. was shocking to me. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Was. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and the dad gets arrested, uh, mm-hmm. the, and the son runs and then they have a whole year where they don't really tell you kind of what's been happening. All you know mm-hmm. is that he's been checking in 
with Anne Hayes' character uh, every now and then, and he asks her if he can use their library to help mm-hmm. to study. Mm-hmm. And I, what the, the one character I thought was a real miss was the um, the rich guy's son. Mm-hmm. I thought that character was kind of one note and like why on earth would he care if somebody's literally using a public library like it's part of this museum like i don't know to me that that's like some kind of scandal there's there's a child using your library yeah i I, so i kind of got what they were trying to do with him he was trying to like you know he was all about the business because his father was always away doing business his father's like a philanthropist yeah and so he and so his and he was trying to like get his father's attention by you know joining a business or something other. Um, yeah, it, I mean, yeah, it didn't yeah. really do much. I mean, you knew that he was going to eventually be the one to find him, and you know where and where that whole thing was going. But he, I, I don't think, I, I don't think he was really needed. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. So he wasn't really needed, and uh, the when they have the chase. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because he chases him uh, throughout New York. He ends up climbing on top of Belvedere Castle and falling into the the pond, the frigid pond. I mean, that was all pretty intense. It was, I thought, very well done. And and, and I'm wondering, like, who would do that? Who would chase, like, someone that broke in and, like, he, like, he fought, he followed the bus that he got on in a taxi and called. I mean, it was just. That was that was a that was a little much. Like, yeah. first of all, if someone breaks into anywhere, I'm I am I'm not chasing them. Like, I'm yeah. you know get them out, get them away. If they run away, I call the police, let them know, report it, whatever. I yeah. don't care. Just get out um, because you never know, like if they're armed or anything. So that made no sense. Yeah, but it looks like it really looked like Central Park and Belvedere mm-hmm. Castle. That part yeah. I think must have been shot. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you fake that. Yeah, it was very well done. And I I think that Danny was a pretty compelling character because he he could he could do it on his own. He was Mm -hmm. self-sufficient. He's not Mm -hmm. one of those. um, He's not he was not one of those teenagers I hate. That's just like sullen and miserable. And no, like he he had like a valid point of view and perspective Mm -hmm. and and like his dad was unreasonable was yeah. not willing to listen to mm-hmm. him and i uh, i mean i don't know like i understand wanting to give your son a living but mm-hmm. not to the point of like losing him like there's a point where i think any parent would be like okay <laughs> you <Yeah>. win <laughs> yeah i mean and it's not like he he didn't it, what he wanted wasn't unreasonable all, first of yeah. all all he wanted to do was take a day off from cutting down these trees to go, not even a whole day. He just wanted to go and help the yearbook um, committee take the pictures because right. he made that commitment. And his father was like, no, I need you here. We need to get these trees. We need to hit. Uh, and it was like, you know, you can delay one. You can delay it one day. You can, yeah. you know, you can miss a couple hours for, for this kid to just do this one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I mean, I get that whole like, oh, this is a family business. This is I'm leaving this to you. Um, you know, there's no other alternative. I mean, that's pretty old school. You know, but it's uh, I mean, a lot of people feel that way. So I so I got that and that whole setup, that whole juxtaposition, um, you know, made sense. And so I and so you could see where they were kind of building this to. It's very easy to kind of get lost in New York. So. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I can see why he would really want that, but like mm-hmm. at the point where your son is literally run away, I mean, mm-hmm. I think that uh, I don't, he just you would. It's not like he's wanting to. It's not like into drugs, like Laura Dern in Season for Miracles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just wants to take pictures. Yeah, see, <laughs> at he, the end of the world, he wants to go to college. Uh-huh. Scandalous. Yeah, I, scandalous. I <laughs> How dare he? Uh, <laughs> uh so he ends up talking to bridget the sister uh Mm -hmm. at the ice skating Mm -hmm. and uh, i thought they had good chemistry believable as brother sister and yeah i liked her um the the, the young actress that played the sister um you know you can tell 
And I think they did a good job of like, you know, she was kind of trying to play peace, peacemaker between the father and the son and, you know, um, and also trying to like take on like almost like a maternal role <laughs> with, with both of them in some ways, kind of like a yeah. role of her in some ways. Which I don't and, think is that uncommon for, yeah. for fractured families like this, yeah. for the oldest daughter to take mm-hmm. on that kind of yes. maternal role. Yeah, and, even though the brother is older and the and with the yeah. father, it was kind. Of, it was interesting and, like I said, and somewhat realistic. Like I could see that happening. Mm-hmm. So especially for like the way in which both of them, you know, you can tell like that the both of them really felt the absence of like the mother, um, you know, in the family. So 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 it kind of yeah. makes sense. I and I liked that. You know, he was like, yeah. you know. Um, I miss my sister. Like we need to do something, set up a way to, yeah. so I can see my sister. And it's like, and that's pretty risky because the sister could tell the father, a lot of things could go wrong, which they did in that, you know, the father, you know, obviously with this time pass and he's missed his son, he is, um, you know, like he does not really want her out of his sight. Like, Oh, you're going to ice skating with these people. Mm-hmm. Um, let me, let me join. Cause I, you know, I just can't. <laughs> and so, so. Yeah. 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 And, and she ends up stealing the cash box and mm-hmm. then finally confessing to it. Mm-hmm. And I like the way that older Hallmark movies mm-hmm. involved the church in Christmas movies. Mm-hmm. You don't see that very much now unless, unless it's like a gift of peace or Kirk Franklin for a lifetime, mm-hmm. something like that. But um, it, like it's just a part of the story. It's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a faith based film by any means. It's right. just like, and that's like that's realistic. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know what the percentages are, but a majority I, I, of people have some kind of religious element to their cr- Christmas holiday celebrations. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, even if they don't go to church almost any other time of year, a lot of people go to church at Christmas or Hanukkah or, or whatever it might be. And, mm-hmm. uh, and so I kind of like that, that it's just, it's just interwoven into the story mm-hmm. with the choir and mm-hmm. everything. And um, uh, yeah, this is when we get the chase mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, and I thought that was all very well done. Um, they end up taking him in an ambulance and uh, um uh, then she tries to tell the dad to accept him being a photographer. He's yeah. still being a little bratty, which mm-hmm. seems like, boy, <laughs> he really is not like I, I would have, I would have given in a lot sooner. Than he, yeah. That's for sure. Especially at this point, at, at this yeah. point, you know, he almost he, died. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I also think part of it was he was he was resenting that she didn't tell him that she had been um in contact with his yeah. son and um you know was kind of helping him to you know stay away um you yeah. know like like he would come and see her periodically she would give him money she would let him stay in the library to study for the GED test and yeah. all that stuff so you know with that kind of thing like there were times that she could have like, you know, Oh, you can stay in the library and then your father can, come, and then I'll, and then I'll tell your father where you, where you, you know, that kind of thing. And he, and she chose not to do that, which. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why I just felt like the chemistry wasn't that great. Like, I don't know. I just, well, it was hard to I, buy I them as a couple it, because they had been at odds for so much of the movie and so they, they just they, hadn't had that much like cute time. Yeah. And so for me, you know how I feel. <laughs> enemies to lovers <laughs> needs to be steamier if you're right. going to be enemy, enemies to lovers, you have to have something that's going to get you to overcome yeah that, and uh, i think this movie would have been perfectly fine it's just a family story mm-hmm. it didn't need that romantic element yes yeah you know yeah. but um and in like hall of fame they didn't always have a romantic element yeah I mean, I guess the National Christmas Tree, that one does have a little bit, but not much. Yeah. That's one I think of. But, uh, but yeah, the owner's son, he ends up uh, offering a job to Danny. Mm-hmm. He says, art inspires us to build a better world. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. 
And so everybody makes up and they take the last Christmas tree to Catherine's party. Mm -hmm. And they also reveal where the silver bell comes from, from his photo, Mm -hmm. from his photographs. It's Mm -hmm. in the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and then, um, and he says, you were sent into my life for a reason. And uh, so everybody makes up in there. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, So, so, yeah. What would you give this one? What do you think? I'll give it. I'll give it like a, I'll give it four, four crowns. Um, I think that the, that the acting was very good. Um, yeah. You know, I did find myself emotionally invested, particularly with um, Dan, Danny. I think that was his son's name. Yeah. And the Dan, kids. Danny and Bridget. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, for them, um, I thought that, um, you know, the late Anne Hayes and Tate Donovan were actually, you know, very good, very good act actors. I found like his character, Despite being pretty unlikable, I found that, you know, uh, I do think that Tay Donovan kind of had the charm to kind of overcome some of that a little bit for me. Mm -hmm. um, I do find, I did find some of the story elements, you know, like, for example, like you, like we talked about with the owner's son, like didn't really need to be there. Um, Like them, the the couple get, get, you know, the, you know, and Haitian Tate Donovan getting together despite all of this, like they didn't really do anything to like resolve that issue. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't play an, up enough attraction for me to like, but buy that that they would even get past that. Agreed. So that's why, I like you know, so like I because of the acting um, and the production value and um like overall family kind of story and, and the way that I was able to like become emotionally invested. That's why I'll give it for like, um, if this had lesser actors or like a lower like budget, if this wasn't hall of fame, I could see myself going down on like three, but you know, I think that those elements knock it up for me. So I'll go yeah. for it. I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. And I do really like Margo Martinell. She's always mm-hmm. great. So that was fun to see her. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Our next, our last movie we're talking about is Farewell, Mr. Kringle. Mm-hmm. And this is from 2010 mm-hmm. and it stars Christine Taylor and uh, Christopher Wheel mm-hmm. and William Morgan, Morgan Shepard as Chris mm-hmm. Kringle and the director is Kevin Connor writer, Robert Tate Miller. Mm-hmm. And the summary is a magazine journalist who no longer celebrates Christmas visits the quaint town of mistletoe to blog about an inspirational, albeit questionably, questionably delusional man who parades around mm-hmm. pretending to be the real Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so overall, what do you think about this one? I enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I think again, you know, this is some, you know, somewhat classic uh, with the, the wedding at the end. I thought that her character, um, you know, was was relative was a relatively believable. I liked the little arc that she had. Um, I liked the romance. I I actually really enjoyed the um, Chris Kringle element and like you know where we kind of get to see you know what kind of led him to um, you know choosing the life that he lives um, and. Yeah, it was, you know, it was an overall pleasant experience. I like the town. I, you know, always enjoy seeing Vivica A. Fox <laughs> in one of these types of movies, <laughs> usually as someone's boss, um, yeah. you know, but she, you know, so, but yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. I, 
I I thought this one was underrated for a, for a while. It's mm-hmm. nice to have something that really leans into the Santa. You don't get that mm-hmm. as much anymore. So that mm-hmm. was fun. I mean, this you didn't have to tell me this movie was made in 2010. Like mm-hmm. the fact that they that the way that they fr- framed the blogging is mm-hmm. was so like 2010. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, everybody is riveted by this yeah. blog. <laughs> um, and uh, she doesn't celebrate Christmas because she lost her husband. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's really been struggling with anything uh, that her husband died the uh, on Christmas Eve, I think. Yes, Christmas yeah. Eve. And so she hasn't celebrated since. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she gets sent uh, by her boss, Vivica Fox, to report on the real Santa and blog mm-hmm. about it. Blog about meeting Chris Kringle. What was the name of the town again? Was it? Oh, it was Mistletoe. Mistletoe. Yeah, Mistletoe. Mistletoe in and she, Northern California. Yeah, and she's like, I don't even, I don't think Quentin Tarantino could make that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they didn't even try to make uh, this look wintry at all. <laughs> like, this Mistletoe town. It Like, no you know, snow, no. They were like missile in Northern California where it snows. And we th- didn't see like any <laughs> snow at all. So. No, which is definitely a difference between this era of Hallmark movies. Cause we oh, talked yeah. about that before with like matchmaker Santa and some of these other ones that yeah. uh, naughty or nice that just had no fake snow at all. Yeah. None at all. Uh, so then we, we find out that Chris, that, uh, that, uh, he has helped people with their jobs. Uh, mm-hmm. When one woman's mother was in the hospital, he visited. He's touched every person in this town, yeah. but nobody has been inside his house. Or very few people. Very few. Uh, oh, it's, it, it takes a lot to get an invitation into his house. You know, it's yeah. very rare. And the interesting thing is they say that he doesn't really come out until like, you know, just before Christmas, he's just in his house. All, so how does he help yeah. all these people? You know, is it just during yeah. Christmas well, time that he, he does people? He does say that ordinary rules of time and space don't apply to Santa. But he's not Santa, though. So <laughs> what is he? I don't know what he's doing. But no, I, I mean, yeah. is he like in the world of this movie? I think he no, might be he, Santa. No, he's not. They tell his little <laughs> origin story. You know, he his name was whatever it was. He was married. Um, his wife was a nurse at the children's hospital. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she was, um, she worked late um, Christmas But he's like, Eve. I'm so busy on Christmas Eve. I've got to go do my work. Well, yeah, he did. I mean, he did. I mean, obviously, that's all. If he, you know, he's, he is hibernating all year in his little house. And, you know, so, and then he has, to, he has, he has a lot to make up for. I don't know what he's doing with his life, but she, you know, she slipped on black, black ice and died. And so because of that, in that order, so sad. order to kind of like keep his wife um, with him and like her spirit with him, he had, um, you know, she loved Christmas and that, and she had that spirit. And so he decided to celebrate Christmas all year and um and he decided to become mr kringle and she was mrs claus i mean mm-hmm. that was the you know that was her i mean that was him you know so i i think in this story you know first we were trying to deter- determine like is is he the real is he the real santa or not i don't think he's a real santa then it's like is he delusional or not i don't think he's delusional this is like his way of coping with his wife's death and you know keeping her close to him by you know in embodying the spirit mm-hmm. of santa and christmas because you know obviously she was like a true like mrs claus um type of character a true jessica claus so um, so yeah, I think that that's yeah. what, what, what this is. I don't think that he's, I don't think that we're supposed to think he's a real Santa, but, um, I think that, you know, what he does, does truly embody the spirit of Santa mm. Claus. And so, you know, when he that, says it's never too late to have faith, mm-hmm. have faith so, in Santa Claus. Yeah. So, and, and so I, um, I really like, I actually liked that he wasn't really Santa Claus uh-huh. and didn't really think that he was Santa Claus. <laughs> um, I liked that he was, that he was able to still like embody that spirit and that he was able to use um, his wife's passing to motivate him to do something positive and to honor her by, yeah. uh, 
contributing in that way to this town. Um, well, yeah. and then we have we have Mark Stafford, who mm-hmm. is the love interest here, and he's like your classic Hallmark man with many jobs. Yes. He's always um, doing, he runs the inn. He's always doing all these other things for everybody in the town. He was yeah. a divorce attorney at one point. He yes. just got it all. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, you can tell he is a reformed bad man. Of business. Yeah. I mean, yes. he, was a, he was a defense. He was a divorce attorney. He made a lot of money. Um, mm-hmm. with, with you know doing doing these divorces and then one day a little girl of like one of the couples that he was you know divorcing said like why are you ruining my family and it you know Never that got to him. and he was like oh I need, I'm gonna I need to figure out who I am he went back to his hometown which was um, mistletoe and you know he decided to buy the inn and you know do all the other things that he was doing, you know? Yeah. But yes, very classic man with many jobs, very classic, um, you know, kind, generous, genuine, romantic. Yeah. You know. Well, and, and also she's sort of your classic woman from the city coming to the yes. small town, you know, that yeah. we've seen. Yeah. And... The bad lady of business. Who yeah. had, <laughs> um, I mean, so kind, she, and she kind of, She's not like the main ice queen of business, but mm-hmm. you know, you do have that coolness that like, you know, kind oh, of yeah. attached, um, you know, her first wanna... interaction <laughs> with Santa Claus. And she says, uh, I did, de- I detect some cynicism. I detect yeah. more skepticism. How, like, like with the whole, like, how long have you been playing Santa? Oh, <laughs> the ordinary rules of time and space don't apply to Santa. I love the kids booing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, so they also have a pretty fun meet cute where mm-hmm. they're doing all of this construction uh, yeah. ar- around the inn. And yeah. you think they could at least wait till like eight o'clock. Yes. They wake her up so early with all this construction. Yes. And uh, and then he comes in to help fix something or whatever. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And he, he she comes out of the shower she doesn't yes. have any hot water and I think it was because the um the, it was the heat so the heat yeah, wasn't yeah. working and he went to go like um fix the heating unit in her um, yeah in her room so really he sees in her morning. in her towel which is yes. shocking Shock, scandalous oh you know <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> but at, this is another case where this guy mark he falls pretty fast yes for her yeah but, i mean you know but that's kind of you know the the um the man with many jobs in the small town either falls hard and fast <laughs> or he's all score depending like he could be a hot widower or, yes you no know, or otherwise burned by love or burned by someone in the city and so and so he's either, so he's so there's usually the two extremes you either fall hard and fast yeah or you're also kind of slow and reluctant yeah well, I hope that Christine Taylor does more, does another Hallmark movie someday, because I don't know if you've heard her, what's happened with her and Ben Stiller. Uh, no. They, uh, they have like, I think two, two or three children. And yeah. uh, during the um, pandemic, he decided to, he wanted to be with them during quarantine lockdown. And so even though they had been divorced or separated for, for like five years, and uh, and so he moves back in to be with his kids during lockdown. And over the course of all of that time, they ended up getting back together. Mm. Which I think it's like the coolest love story. It's really mm. fun. It's so like that, that that's the COVID really love story I want to see. Mm-hmm. It's so cute. So Christine Taylor, you should make more. <laughs> you should make a homework movie. You know, you can you can be a producer. Sell this. Yes. Star, you know? <laughs> that would be so cute, but. Anyway, they kiss pretty early in yeah. this. Yeah. Yes. He um as when when they co- meet at the party, he just goes for it. Actually, all yeah. um, two of these three movies had pretty early kisses, which I'm a fan. I don't. I I think yeah, you can too. do more than one kiss in these movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I loved her reaction to the kiss. She was like, oh. <laughs> "It's really cute, really cute." So then, and she's like so excited. She gets all the uh, the construction crew coffee and donuts. <laughs> yes, and of course, you know when she when she when he asks her out on like an actual date, 
she um she puts it in the blog you know Mm -hmm. and uh, and I loved like the scene, like the next day that every, the whole town knows about the kiss. Yeah. Like, they, the, the, like, I loved the one person who was like, now that man is the reason they invented jeans. <laughs> oh, <Lord>. That was funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then she finds out about the car accident that, that uh, Mrs. Kringle passed away on and they like reenacted that pretty. Yes. I, I, they didn't need to do that they could have just had him telling the story mm-hmm. uh but uh you could tell they had i guess some budget mm-hmm. to do that well they had less movies so more money to go around yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this one you hear it's never too late to have faith mm-hmm. and uh then they get they they go driving but with her and chris but they okay. uh um and she has a cell phone and you can tell it's like ooh, i she's got a cell phone she's fancy <laughs> i mean i had my first cell phone in 2002 so it really yeah, didn't me, 2010. I, yeah it's 2004 uh, yeah it like i got it for christmas um you know my parents have been like you know you're gonna gotta wait till you are yeah, 16, I think. And so, you know, so was mm. it 2003? I think it was, two, it was 2003. Like, wait till you're 16. And then oh, I got okay. it right before. Um, yeah, I got it because I was a teaching assistant and I mm-hmm. wanted people to be able to reach me a little bit easier yeah. uh, in college. So I got it. Yeah. It was 2001 or 2002, one of those. But anyway, so then they have this date mm-hmm. and uh and oh there before that there's conversation she's having with vivica fox and mm-hmm. she's like what is he is he one to ten and she's like 9.5 and Vivica's like i've never seen a 9.5 yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was good yeah. and uh so then they go on this date and chris cooks for them and they get to go in the house so that yeah. was yes he he says, christmas is not out. yeah he says christmas is not just a day on the calendar it's feeling yeah and Exactly. I think you two have potential. You go together like matching stockings on a mantle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? You think they had good chemistry? I like them together. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I think, you know, I don't think that they were quite Emily and Nathan that level, but, you know, they yeah. were close. They, they, were, were they were pretty good. And I mean, they find out that it's his last year to do the to play santa and he says looking in a rear view mirror is no way to live your life mm-hmm. and uh, i was you know i was i so I actually liked that that he was like you know this is going to be our last i mean last year i don't know what he's going to do but <laughs> but i kind of liked that yeah it was good when you when you're ready you're when you're ready, we're ready. And then he says, if a man's life is judged by the joy he gives to others, then your life mm-hmm. knows no bounds for mm-hmm. saying about Santa. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says, uh, then Vivica says, love shows up in the most unusual places. And she's shutting mm-hmm. down three days before Christmas and mm-hmm. what she wants more from her. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she has to go back. And uh, uh, then, and Mark keeps trying to, trying to uh, find her. And she says, I'm afraid, afraid of having a dog, afraid of it dying, which is mm-hmm. so sad. Um, and then she ends up getting the dog and a dog named Todd. Mm-hmm. That was very sweet. Very sweet. Yeah. Um, and then he's talking to Mark and he says, we're a couple of commitment phobes. What do you say we change together? Very mm-hmm. sweet. Yeah very sweet and then the end they get married yes which so, again you would never see that now so i was kind of shocked like there was i was like a fact, full-on when showed, wedding when they showed them getting married i was i was looking for like a like is it staying a year later or something but no <laughs> it was just that it was that christmas day and she had been there for a couple of weeks at most <laughs> so yeah i was i was actually like and I'd forgotten about that little detail. And so I was like, oh, yeah. And so when I saw that they were getting married, I was like, like I, said, I was literally looking on the screen, yeah. like all over the screen to see something that says a year later or something. <laughs> and but I mean, no- it, he must be the real Santa though, because they pulled together this Christmas wedding in like two days. No, I mean, well, I mean, he has all these, these, these 
connections from years of just being <laughs> this wonderful person, like 50 years. So, I mean, uh, I think I think he can yeah. make it happen. Um, you, you call that Santa magic magic <laughs> too, but I think he just, he is just well connected because yeah. of, you know, his years of, <laughs> uh, you know, being such a, you know, a help to the town. Yeah. I mean, they had to get a marriage license. They had to get, I mean, it was a it was a lot that need you know, mm-hmm. but uh, somehow they were able to pull that whole thing together in like a day. <laughs> or yeah, but. like I think that Silver Bells is probably a better movie. I think yes. it's better made, better acted. Yes. But mm-hmm. I think I would rewatch this one more than Silver Bells. I agree. I yeah. agree. So, so I is, still I think give it a four. Yeah, I would give it like four point two five because mm-hmm. like I for me personally, like I I do think that. Um, that so I, I mean, I enjoy this one a little bit more. Um, I think that the story overall makes a little bit more sense um, mm-hmm. than than Silver Bells. Like there was, like we talked about, there were some story things that in that particular movie that you know didn't really fly for me. I think I actually think the couple made more sense. I mean, obviously the the couple wasn't really as important in Silver Bells, but. Um, but yeah, so I like that this that this a little bit better in that in that respect. And I actually like that they kind of subvert the Santa trope a little bit, and mm-hmm. that you know this is just you know a man who um, you know has a tragedy in his life that decides to like embody the spirit of Saint Nicholas or um, Chris Pringle. Yeah, and, well, the whole town was fun. Yeah, the whole town yeah, was fun. They went from being plain old Somerville to Mistletoe because of um, because of um, Mr. Kringle. You know? Yeah, so. and now that man is the reason they invented jeans. I'll never forget that line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I remember that too. Uh, oh yeah. I, so, so this was a good proper movie. So, yeah, mean, I all, agree. I think I, it was a good one. And I actually, and despite like my saying, you know, kind of you know, kind of playing down a little bit on Silver Bells. Um, I, like I said, I gave it four crowns. I yeah. actually really enjoyed it. And mm-hmm. I had not watched it. I mean, in several years, like, I mean, at least 10 years. So yeah. Yeah, I was glad to have like the reintroduction to that movie. And, yeah. you know, I would watch it again. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I agree that I'd probably watch, um, you know, like, um, you know, spare well, Mr. Kringle before I re- rewatch um, Silver Bells, but I would definitely rewatch um, mm-hmm. Silver Bells. So I was, I'm really glad that I got to, yeah, to give this one another, uh, another, another watch. Um, and of course, Season for Miracle, I think it's, it's, it's just a classic. It's definitely one of my all time favorites. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. well, let us know what you think of these three movies. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments mm-hmm. or on Twitter. And, uh, and you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, or on Rotten Tomatoes. And also, uh, we have our Facebook is back, which is very exciting. Yes. Uh, so you can find us at Homework is Pod and Homework is Podcast, all of our social media. And uh, check out the Patreon group, which Thaddeus is a member of. We have a lot of fun talking about old and new movies, Homework and otherwise. And uh, then we also have uh, exclusive reviews every week for the patrons. We have opportunities to be on the podcast uh, and lots of other. We have our watch longs every month or Q and A's, mm-hmm. which are really fun. We have a fun one coming in uh, in February where mm-hmm. we are going to be watching Meeting Mr. Christmas with Madison and Greta, the leads of that film. So oh, that's going to okay. be super fun. Yeah, uh, I'm excited. And uh, and so all a lot of fun stuff coming up uh, for the patrons. So please check it out. I really appreciate it. And we also have the merch store, which has tons of fun Valentine's designs We're coming up with Valentine's. So check that out. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. <laughs>